So I'm holding in my hand a spool of carbon nanotube fibers. So this is a continuous fiber. It's about as thick as a human hair, and uh, it's about uh, 50 meters long uh, on this single spool. So this uh, spool has trillions and trillions of carbon nanotubes that are all aligned in the same direction along the axis of a fiber, and they're very well packed. And because of this structure, we now can translate the amazing properties of carbon nanotubes, which are nanoscale properties, we can now translate it onto an engineering fiber, which is something that we can handle on the macroscopic engineering scale for applications. So what you're looking at here is two bundles of our nanotube fiber that are holding up an LED light bulb that weighs 50 grams. Those fibers are also being used to run the current that's powering the bulb. So this is demonstrating the multifunctionality of the fibers, that they are strong enough to support the weight of the bulb and also have high enough conductivity to provide the current. This is just some fiber that I took off the drum, which was not under controlled conditions, but it's still good fiber. It's just we don't know exactly what the conditions were, so we don't keep it. But you can see that it has a lot of strength. This thing is actually pretty heavy. This is the spinning cylinder. So we have carbon nanotubes that are dissolved in a solvent, which is chlorosiphonic acid. And this solution is a very viscous type of material, so it's uh, kind of like mayonnaise almost in viscosity. And we're extruding it through 19 small holes and then winding it onto a drum. This is a spool of the fiber. Uh, after it's been spun and wound, this is one continuous filament. So this was produced in a single spinning experiment uh, where we spun a continuous filament and then were able to wind it onto a spool like this. The machine we're sitting near here is the uh, SEM, the Scanning Electron Microscope. And we use this to do high magnification imaging of the surface of our fibers so we can get an idea of what the, the structure is on a, a microscopic scale, a micro, this, you know, the scale of a, a couple of micrometers or a few nanometers, tens of nanometers. The cool thing about it is you have a material that's very strong and highly conductive, so it has properties of both metals and high strength materials like carbon fiber. But on the other hand, you can handle it like you would cotton because it's essentially a textile material, not like a, a rigid material. The main improvement that, uh, in terms of our process versus other work that's already been done on fabricating nanotube fibers is that if you use a wet spinning process as we've developed here, uh, you have a, a very scalable process. So you can, you can easily scale up to make um, more and more material without necessarily um, increasing your costs. So Teji makes Tvaron, uh, which is uh, one of the commercial brands of PPTA fibers. Uh, it's very similar to Kevlar. They use uh, for high strength uh, uh, applications like ballistic protections. And uh, because the method for making uh, uh, Tvaron is so similar to the method we use for making nanotube fibers, uh, uh, Teijing are interested in working with us. They are real artists in the art of fiber spinning, and uh, they have been able to move the technology so much faster than we could have done just by ourselves.